Empathy for those struggling and striving. Indignation that the wealthiest country on earth would leave children hungry, sick, abandoned, and alone. Compassion for the least among us. Faith that our nation, that our world, are capable of better. Countless words have been used to remember my grandfather. Poetry has been written about the work he did and the life he lived. But for a man who loved language, it's the images that tell his story best. The caress of a child's face in a shotgun house in the Mississippi Delta. His hand on the shoulder of a coal miner in eastern Kentucky. A small piece of bread shared with Cesar Chavez in the dusty fields of Delano. Images of a father, a son, a brother, a husband, an uncle. Of a family home adorned to this day with photos of loved ones, graduations, weddings, silly moments, grandkids, great-grandkids, his brood ever-growing, his love ever enduring. Of his extraordinary wife and partner, who 50 years after his passing still wears her wedding ring. Of a family who strives every day to make him proud. Those images accumulate here today of Dolores Huerta, his kindred Chicana spirit, of John Lewis, a brother and mentor, of Emma Gonzalez and our army of young activists, such fearless stewards of a future my grandfather imagined and summoned us to. For Robert F. Kennedy, this was the measure of a life well lived. People, a human connection, the touch, the look, the moment between strangers or friends, where we leave aside expectation and ego and acknowledge each other's worth and wisdom, where we pause and see each other. When we look past color or creed or class and recognize a humanity we all share, our imperfections, our contradictions, our hope for something, for a truer, kinder tomorrow. That humanity anchored my grandfather. It carried him from the fields, farm workers to the hollows of Appalachia, from the sprawling reservations of Indian country to the tenements of bed where in the shadows, in the background, in the quiet spaces that rarely sought or got attention, Robert Kennedy found the arteries of our American heart. And he said to those forgotten that your country sees you, your country values you, that America 
would not be America without you. He held their hands. He knelt by their side. He shared their sorrows. And he lifted their spirits. He wasn't radical or revolutionary. He was human and willing to be vulnerable. It was his greatest gift to give. He felt so intensely the suffering of others. And from that pain arose the moral force to relieve it. He saw their dreams and dared to ask, why not? Today, we also remember a father who delighted in the laughter of his children, long walks with his dogs, football with his family, the smile of his wife. We celebrate a leader who saw potential in every child and fought for a government that did the same. We recommit ourselves to his higher calling, the very thing at stake today of a country who accepts you for who you are. <laughs> 25 years ago, in this very place, a family friend stood and recalled the journey of my grandfather. Then, just six months into his term, President Bill Clinton eloquently recalled a man who, quote, went places most leaders never visit, listened to people most leaders never hear, and spoke a simple truth most leaders never speak. Most of all, President Clinton implored us to remember, quote, the powerful, beautiful, the simple faith of Robert Kennedy. We can do better. <laughs> 